Netanya, Israel, for five nightmarish months. The parents of Daniel Perez and Itay Chen thought their sons, both soldiers based at a military outpost less than a mile from the Gaza border on October 7, were being held hostage by Hamas in conditions they could hardly bear to think about. They lobbied and prayed for their son's release. Then, last month, the Israeli army made a devastating announcement based on battlefield intelligence gleaned during their ground operation in Gaza. The two men had been killed on October 7, their bodies dragged into Gaza. For the Perez family, the news was the first piece of information they'd received since that day. After 163 days of zero connection with our son, Daniel's father Doran said last month. Amid new waves of grief, the families faced a grim decision. Should they put empty coffins into the ground, to comply with Jewish burial traditions stipulating immediate burial, or wait for an elusive ceasefire deal that would allow the release of their son's remains? As the war hits the six-month mark, many Israeli families are still grappling with the consequences of the October 7 attack. The Perez family chose to hold a burial ceremony for Daniel, a 22-year-old tank commander, immediately after receiving the news, as was encouraged by the Israeli military rabbinate. The family put into the coffin Daniel's blood, recovered from the tank in which he was killed, and his blood-soaked shirt, found 50 yards away, toward the border with Gaza. The family was in shock at the news. But they were also, for the first time in five months, certain that he was not, and had not been, suffering in Hamas captivity. We worried you were cold, that you were not eating, that you were experiencing indescribable trauma, said Shira Perez said at her brother's funeral in Jerusalem. But when the army told us the terrible news, a weight lifted from my heart because I knew that in the last 163 days you were with us, looking after us. Itay Chen's father, Ruby, attended Daniel's funeral. The two young men fought to defend their base and the civilians beyond it from the Hamas-led forces who stormed the border that October morning. But the Chen family has not held a funeral or sat shiva for Itay, who was 19 and a dual Israeli and American citizen, saying his son's body deserved the dignity of proper burial, and the family deserved a physical place where they can mourn. Seven other Israeli Americans are still believed to be held in Gaza, together with more than 120 Israeli hostages. The Israeli ground operation in Gaza has killed more than 33,000 people there, according to the Gaza Health Ministry, which does not distinguish between combatants and civilians. In Gaza, thousands of families have not been able to hold funerals either. Instead, many are placed in mass graves. The Jewish schedule of grief follows a strict order intended to ease mourners into their new reality.